Yeah, well, I suppose this is where it all began for me. From a very young age, I was coming up, my dad was playing up here, mid to late 90s, and, and both my brothers played for the school, who, who shared grounds with the Academy Rugby Club. And I suppose this is where we spent most of our Saturday afternoons um, during the winter, um, eating bacon fries and drinking cans of Coke. Mini rugby was, was great with my, my primary school, Ben Madigan, and, and, and then playing academy minis here, and then going through in the, in the school playing rugby for my school third 15, unbelievable memories there. Following that school's cup final was, was probably a, a highlight for me as, as a youngster. When I left school I was, I was offered a, a place in Ulster Sub Academy and then that was something that came as a bit of a shock to me but I was delighted. My plan was to travel away to uh, a university across the water. So I put that on hold, spoke to my dad and he said well the opportunities like this don't come up too often, maybe give it a go for a year and see if you can defer your university course. And, I suppose since then, uh, I've never really looked back. Pre-season for the World Cup, I had a phone call from Dan saying, Hi Ian, would like to go over a few bits and pieces for next season. Would you like to come up and have a chat with me in my office? Relatively unaware, I said, yeah, not a problem. So I was up, up on one Wednesday afternoon, went in to have a chat with him and he said, and then he said to me, I think going forward I'd like you to be club captain this year. And I was obviously over the moon, delighted. Similarly, I was a wee bit frustrated because then I had to go back to Ireland camp, getting glimpses of all the hard work the boys were doing up here, and then having to leave them again and knowing that I wouldn't be playing for them until probably November time was a wee bit devastating, finding this news out in, in probably August. So it was a great honour and I'm delighted to be able to to be able to do that and, and represent uh, Ulster. The opportunity to, to leading the boys out, especially in, in the European Cup as well, has been massive. So it's something I think that I'll, I'll look back on with, with very fond memories. The amount of leaders in the squad, for me, I find that as, as a real settling influence. I understand that it, the weight of the world isn't on my shoulders, it's on this team's shoulders. It's, it's, it's unbelievable to know that you can share that load with so many good leaders throughout a squad. That's a hard work, just going to stand this. We talked about other leaders in the squad. There are many other boys in the squad who can do the, the chatting, who can get boys riled up. Quiet, calm word is something I think that doesn't do teams too much harm, bring them back down, getting them focused and, and then getting them ready to go again. Going way back to the start of my career, I remember learning certain things um, off Johan Muller. Probably at that stage, it probably wasn't about leadership, but it's probably actions that made him a good leader, doing extra bits and pieces after training and learning more about the line out of him, similar with Paul O'Connell and then probably later on in, in, um, in my career, ironically someone I'd probably spent more time with, I didn't learn with him until way later on as Rory, understanding that the way he holds himself, the way he carries himself, the way he talks to people, it was something that I probably had been subject to for many, many years, but I'd never quite picked up on, on reasons why and how, how he did it. And him amongst a lot of other um, great leaders, subconsciously, I'm sure, understanding why they're good leaders. You, when, when a good leader leads a team, you can, you can feel the qualities, the leadership qualities in which he brings. And um, being able to sit back and put your finger in them is often quite difficult, but as I said, subconsciously, you're, you're probably always learning. Like Rory, I, I would be quite calm, I'd be relatively calculated, and that's something that, that I think a lot of teams, or every team needs, is a bit of a calm head. The age profile of squad, the average age is probably the lowest. It's, it's, it's been in many years, if not ever. I think that's something that is, is a massive positive that we've been working on this year. The work rate of the young lads, how competitive everyone's been, the desire to do well, and a lot of those young fellas had never experienced knockout rugby, and they got a chance to experience it last season, and that has just driven their desire to want to do it again, and, and the opportunities at which that holds. So um, for them, I'm really excited to, to try and progress on further, and to be a part of that is, is extremely exciting as well. Probably one of the things that made me or, or, or made me more likely to, to commit to Ulster. I suppose it's probably the investment in the club in terms of the players. You see so much effort going in from all the players so regularly. Part of me felt to walk away from that would, would definitely be a, be a way of saying, oh well, we did what we've tried to do and, and it wasn't enough. Whereas I definitely feel that it's, 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 it's a path and, and 
were still building towards something and, and to walk away at the end of my last contract would have been saying, well, I, I'm giving up on what we've done already. So I think building going forward was probably something that, that, I, that was a real driver for me to want to stay, to, to be a part of something or to be a part of an Ulster squad that could do something special.